Yeah, especially against a guy like Kimbrell. You know, Kimbrell's going to supply every bit of um, power that you need to get the, you know, to get the ball where you need to get to. He, I mean, he's tremendous, obviously. But um, Harold was able to calm himself down and just take whatever he gave him. Um, you know, in those situations, I'm always reminded by some old coaches that used to say, beat him with a single, beat him with a single. And that's what we kept saying in the dugout. And uh, nobody better up there when you need a single than Harold. Um, with Michael, too, I mean, he, he came in throwing bullets again in the ninth. Um, did that, that kind of, did your pitching plan kind of work as crazy as this game was? Did you kind of have that the way you, you couldn't have asked for much better the way that turned yeah. out? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, um, you know, both teams had to go through their, their pens and use a lot of yeah. resources. You know, ours with Urena um, exiting a little bit early, you know, for a couple of reasons. But I, you know, it, 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 we asked a lot out of our pitching today. And, and yes, we gave up a few runs in the middle of the game. But as the game got closer and our, our offense kept fighting back, our pitching really responded. So uh, Cisnero had a, had a huge inning. Uh, Tyler Alexander, who doesn't get talked about a lot, had had some some gutsy pitching. Fulmer at the end, um, you know, had, had they not put a free runner at second base, probably has two scoreless there. So uh, very impressed and, and happy for our pen. Can I ask you before it gets lost in the shuffle here, is, uh, what's the concern level on both Urena with that bruise and with the Jamer's bruise? Yeah, they're both day to day. You know, Urena um, took a bullet right off his his like leg, right above his his ankle, and you could just tell. I didn't like the way he covered first base, and that's when I started getting Dino up um, in the bullpen and get him getting him hot for the bottom part of their order that was switch hitter with Hap, and then all the lefties. And so, um, getting him out of there, he's you know he we'll see. He's moving around and he was jumping around in the in the in the in the clubhouse. So that's a good sign. He was happy with one. Um, so, I, you know, well, he'll get an extra day no matter what with the off day after the Seattle series. Right. Right. I'm pretty optimistic about him. We'll see how he is tomorrow. Um, Candy, you know, took a, a cutter on the inside part of his knee. He's, he's got a little bit of a, a contusion that um, and it was hurting him. I mean, he was trying to, to stay in the game and um, you could I mean, Doug could feel the fact it was swelling up a little bit. So um, we're still hopeful for him. He's not going to play tomorrow. I was looking to give him a day off anyway. He didn't know that until right now, but. It was, it, it'll, it'll be a day-to-day -day thing. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chris. We'll go to Cody Stavenhagen from The Athletic. Hey, Jay. Akil in the ninth and then Jones in the tenth both had really great jumps on their, on their steals. The Jones ones, of course, ends up being huge. Was that like an advanced scouting thing, or, or what would you attribute that to? Both. You know, both advanced scouting. I mean, I, it was um, impressive on two fronts as we talked about what the keys were. And Akil got a really good jump against a guy who's tough to steal against uh, on, the, on the mound. And it, uh, to me, that was, it took, you know, he had the green light. And with Jacoby, we wanted him to be very aggressive. He looked at the video uh, on the iPad before if, if uh, he was able to pinch run for either Miggy or uh, Nomar or Scope, he was going to be the pinch runner and try to take second base. So uh, both of them got incredible jumps. And it's one of the reasons you don't leave one foot on first base when you're trying to uh, create some opportunities for yourself. And then you win the game with the aggressive base running we've talked about since spring, a pretty aggressive sin there at third. Um, you know, how good does this see a payoff? Yeah, no, I mean, you, you, you got to risk something to, to get some payoff. And obviously that throw was just offline. And um, I think it might even hit Jacoby. So, it, okay. you know, that you, it was it was an aggressive send. It's an aggressive base running. But if we're not standing on second base with the stolen base, we don't have that opportunity. We got to get another hit off Kimbrell, which is a tall task. All right. Thanks, AJ. Cody. Go next, Evan Petzold from the Detroit Free Press. Yeah, AJ, just curious with uh, Urania going back to him. I mean, you know, he stayed in the game and, and ended up pitching. Um, was that just because he felt good enough to go at that point? Or, and I guess, too, yeah. how big was that? When yeah, was it was, it was big for him to get a, a few outs. And, and, and I felt bad because I probably left him in too long. I was trying to get past those righties and get to the hap at bat. Um, you know, I could have gone to, to, to Dino with the um, with Rizzo and then gone through Duffy. I mean, we, we could have thrown anything at Duffy today and it looked like we weren't going to get him out. So, um, you know, that I, I feel like I left him in a couple batters too long when we were trying to get through those righties. He was fighting to stay in the game in between innings and got his ankle taped. And uh, But once we saw him not moving around, it was time for him to get out. For sure. And then just your, uh, your thoughts on Haas's catch? Yeah, pretty athletic. And he had to go a really long way. And uh, you know, those plays are not normal or natural, no matter how much you practice the shift or practice pop-up priority. And, um, you know, the pitcher or the catcher has to cover that foul, that foul territory. So, um, you know, obviously an acrobatic catch and not one that every catcher in the big leagues can make. 
All right. And then lastly, for me, just curious with, you know, how things went last night to be able to apply that offensive pressure and, you know, get it done with singles and, and you know, move base runners around. I mean, how big is that just after what happened yesterday? No, it is nice. And we had to come from behind a couple times. You know, they came out in the, in the first and put up a couple runs and and then we responded and they put up a couple more runs and then we responded and then they took the lead in the 10th and then we responded. So a uh, huge team win for us and, 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 and something that I feel uh, good about going home tonight. They, they, they give me a nice little birthday present. Thank you. Got it. Trevor Thompson from Valley Sports Detroit. Hey, Jim, just wondering, obviously, it was a long day. It was a seesaw game and everything, but in a game that's that long, how do you guys stay in it mentally? Uh, do you have any tricks of the trade to keep guys in it uh, in the dugout uh, during a long day like this, and, and how do they fare in that way today? Yeah, no tricks. I mean, this, this level will challenge you. So, I, you know, these guys are pros, and and there's, you know, there's no, uh, there's no quit in this team, which I've appreciated. Um, you know, we have had a rough stretch. We've also now playing a lot more competitive baseball the last couple of weeks. Um, our guys will stay in and compete. And I, I, I applaud their effort, and, and quite honestly, we expect it at this level. That's what we're, that's what we're here for.